Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We got some bonus content for you as I was not planning to do this, but uh my buddy GJ DJ Talk rather said I said I was doing a Star Wars series and he said I got something to say about that. I've always and, got uh, something to say about that. <laughs> here we go. Let me just turn on my uh ring light. There we go. That's better. I got a ring light because I'm a professional YouTuber. Yeah, right. Nice, nice. But uh, yeah, so where where do you want to start? This was kind of your idea. Actually, I, I, I think I should ask this first. I know this isn't in your notes, but I'm going to ask anyway. Shoot. What kind of trouble am I getting into uh, doing a rankings video at the end of this Star Wars saga? I think that's totally cool. I, I mean, everyone has their own opinions about Star Wars and, and the rankings and stuff. So as like a non-nerd or geek sort of uh someone who's not attached to the lore who's going to do a rankings video right and i think that I, I think that's cool i'm i'm excited to see where you come up with it yeah that one will be a little different because it's going to be a little bit more uh i won't say scripted but thought out right so i have a bunch of um facts and and stuff i started with episode one because that's obviously where you start well if you're george lucas you start on episode four but well i mean yeah right the, that was the fun part and i mean like i remember when the star the like that episode one came out it was 1999 so, so how do you like it's 19 right and it, copyright me prince a couple of years ago a couple of years before that they re-released the old ones with a bunch of new digital content and put them in the theater. And I remember just like being so excited to be able to go to the theater and see Star Wars in in person in the theater again. Cause I was old, only old enough to see Empire in the theater and I was like four. So I don't really remember it. I love, I love re-releases. I love re-releases. Cause there's nothing better than having a movie being seen on the big screen. Right, I mean, you can't you can't beat it, right? And I mean, being being from a small town like you and I, you don't you don't get to see those those things very often. So when it does happen, it's kind of exciting, right? No, I've I've fully established that I'm the I, I love Star Wars. I'm just not gonna geek out and go. I don't know all the places or all the terminology, but I do love the movies. I'll leave the expertise up to you. That's why I brought you in. Do you have favorite characters? Do you have like what, I yeah. do have favorite characters. I love Chewbacca, and oh. part of the reason for that is it's a lot like the Groot thing, where you don't really understand what he's saying, but they tell you what he's saying, or they imply that they know what he's talking about. Yeah, they interpret him and and sort of what's the word? R two D two is awesome. I love R two D two. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's where I'm at, and I. And for anybody who questions my love of the franchise, I once did a six DVD run through in one day. So, <laughs> well, then in my books, you're a true fan. Yeah, I've done I've done the uh, six run six movie run through in one day, and ironically, it was on Star Wars Day. So, nice. We'll that's with, a good. We'll go that's a that. good day to do it. That's a good day to do it for sure. Uh, this New Year's, I um, did the thing where you start the movie at 10 o'clock you start star Wars, uh episode four yeah so four yeah so four at 10 o'clock and at midnight the death star blows up 2023 is the year of the star wars okay i, so. I don't know i might need a, <laughs> I might need a bathroom break in between there i might have to start at about 9 50 or something well you can always just get up and let the movie ride but you know is it is that a, is that a Star Wars? We're not going to get copyrighted for your cup, are we? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's owned by Disney now. After all, it's not. Fun. I've got all the gear on. I'm I'm rocking it hard today. So. <laughs> yeah, where's the where's the Darth Vader helmet? Right. I don't have any helmets as of yet. This is the deal. Pray I do not alter it further. Right. Some Star Darth Vader gear. What what is your what is your first memory of Star Wars, really? Well, my very first memory of Star Wars. Ha like I said before, was going to the theater in Smithers as like a as a four year old and just like seeing the the um, Hoth world and just being totally enthralled with this thing that was happening in front of me and 
and then I promptly fell, <laughs> fell asleep. I've been known to do that a time or two. That was definitely that was definitely the first memory I have. Um, I was really into the toys and watching the movies afterwards on on TV and on on tape. Yeah, that's right. I said tape. For those of you who don't know, we are Gen Xers. <sighs> yes. Very much I am so. proud to be a Gen Xer. And yeah, like having all the toys, getting getting the new ones for Christmas and having all like the cuz like I am old enough to be like Return of the Jedi age. So I had all the toys that I had were Return of the Jedi sort of generation. And then I have my uncle who's a couple years older than I am. He had all he had collected all the toys. Like he had everything. He had So that's why George Lucas is rich. He had all the toys in the boxes. He had the big Adat Walker. He had everything. And I was privileged enough to be able to play with some of those things. Notice and he I, said some people, not all. Some. Right? Yeah, I mean that that's probably probably my first memory. And then, like, like later on in the 90s, I think it was, what, 96 or 97, when they re-released them, seeing them in the theater again and going with my friends who and I, who were all super nerdy Star Wars kids, going to the theater and watching the movies. And I remember I had this girlfriend who had just moved from, from Holland to Canada, and she had never seen Star Wars. And me and my friends were so hyped about this thing happening. And she was like, what's all this about? And I'm like, oh, my God, you don't know? Like, let's go watch it. It's, it's amazing, <laughs> right? I do this so, right now. So I dragged her to the theater with us. And she was all excited. And after it was over, she's like, what the hell did you just make me watch? She's like, what is this? I don't like See, but sci-fi is one of those things where you either get it or you don't. And I think that really does apply to the Star Wars universe as well. You either get it or you don't. You're either yeah, you're either into it or you're either and you're not. And I, that's that's fair. And I think like that's you're, why when you said you were gonna do a Star Wars like rank, coming from a place of like not nerdy, because like I'd say more than half of Star Wars fans are diehard, right? Like you can't you can't mess with that and you can't you can't wreck it for people. Because they're so into what they're into, right? And yeah, I have. I don't get it twisted. I have an emotional investment. But you've talked to me over the last what is it? Two weeks I've been running this series on my channel, or a week and a half, or whatever. And I told you that watching these movies with a critical eye changes them for you. So what? What? Okay. So like starting with episode one, when you rewatched it critically. What did you see differently? What what stood out to you? Well, it changed the whole it changed the whole franchise, and I understood why number four, episode four, had to come out first. Because if we learn, if we learn, this is just my opinion. Don't come at me in the comments, <laughs> or come at me in the comments. It doesn't matter to me. But in my opinion, the big reveal in Episode 5, as you can see behind me, The Empire Strikes Back. Beautiful thumbnail, by the way. Spoiler um, alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. The reveal at the end of the of that movie isn't as impactful if we see the Anakin storyline. Right. That, that's, that's one thing that really jumped out to me is if, that, if the first trilogy comes out first, is the second one as iconic? And I would say not. I would say not as much. And I mean, it because there's little Easter eggs in the, in that series. Yeah, that right. would give away that reveal. Right. Well, and for sure, right. And it wouldn't be as a, a big of a, a a turning point in in those series. And I think the thing to remember is that George Lucas wrote the whole story and then he sort of picked it apart and put said okay well this part's probably the best part of the whole story so i'm gonna do that as a movie and then like the movie came out in 1977 or whatever it was and it was like nothing anybody had ever seen before like visually story-wise story-wise it's a very it's a very iconic sort of 
um, straightforward hero story, right? And uh, where was I going with this? Um, yeah, and I, it would if if they if he did it in chronological chronological order like they were originally written, it wouldn't have had the I don't think it would have had the impact that it had story wise because you you sort of know what's going to happen already three like three episodes in right and i mean if you re released it like a netflix series of of six shows you're like oh okay yeah but i know well, that happened right so that that's the big thing i took from the episode episode one is it changes the whole franchise yeah in a in a in a way where start starting from the beginning and i like it i like it when when stories do that like you have the, the story of You've got Luke Skywalker and his little journey, and then all of a sudden, like a couple years later, they release a story where it's like the beginning of that. And I like that to the point of like where they keep the sort of mysticism of it. And I think like like the Boba Fett and the Obi Wan Kenobi stories are of that sort of mindset, and continue and i mean like look at the new like the newest star wars even like if you're getting into the those ones like the oh well, you the, know you know mando's coming march first so right and i mean like i'm talking like the the ray stories and and how they sort of wove the old ones into that and i think that those stories also hold meaning for for the new generations and that's what's cool about it is that like my uncle who's a couple years older than me has the 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 old ones and he holds those ones true and then i i sort of jumped on it later in life and then for me it was like they had the episode one two and three they weren't as iconic and some of them weren't all that fantastic you can argue Right. I, I'm going to say something that may upset a lot of people. Episode one kind of gets a bad rap. Well, it does. Absolutely. It does. I and I mean, it had, it had a lot of expectation to live up to with, with the, the cult following and like the, the mysticism that, that the fur the, that four or five and six have, right? Like you don't have that because I mean, they're basically right. Like, Oh well, those movies were great. Let's write three more about yeah. the same story. And it, like, but, but the problem done... is, when you write from the beginning, you're not going to have those climactic moments as much. No, and I mean you don't, and you sort of, you sort of already know what's going to be a hit, what's going to be a miss, right? So I'm going to tell you something that I I I also learned from the uh, second trilogy, as we call it. I guess episodes one, two, and three. Yeah. Is knowing Vader's story. I really began to feel like he was an pathetic victim of circumstance. Because in those first set of films, you can see him trying to do right at every turn. And at every turn, the Jedi Masters were like, it's not your time yet. It's not your time yet. It's not your time yet. Right. And he would have been okay with that except for the fact that he had uh, Emperor Palpatine in his ear manipulating him the whole way. Mm. And even when he goes out of his way to, to help Windu, Windu says, if this is true. And you have to remember that Vader lost his family. Palpatine manipulated him even after Padme passes away. Spoiler alert. He's just, he played, they played him up well as an innocent, like, victim in those first in the second trilogy i guess i almost said first trilogy and i mean he kind of i guess he kind of was in that in that sense of he was manipulated into like the dark side and that's like the dark side like that's the sith sort of mo right they were like well this kid's powerful let's flip him over to our side so we can take control of the galaxy Right, like that's their that was their whole thing, and they 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 saw it in him that he was weak, and he, he was he was easily manipulated. So I mean, let's let's do it. Why not? Right. So, but again, I would never have noticed these things 
if I was just watching the movie as a fan. I only notice these things when I'm like, I'm going to review these movies and I'm going to take a real critical look at what these movies represent. And that's where I became like, wait a second. Is Anakin really the evil genius or did he, was he made to be this way? No, and I think he was, I think he was, I think he, you're right. I think he, in some school of thought there, he was definitely sort of made to be that way just because of who he was and, and, and the situation, right? Like situationally, they were like, okay, this kid's weak. Let's, let's get him. Yeah. So I think that those are the biggest takeaways that I took from episodes one, two, and three is one, it wouldn't have been as powerful a reveal in four, five, and six had it not been for the way it was ordered. Mm-hmm. And two, Vader was just trying to be a decent human being and trusted the wrong people. Right. Fair enough. Um, do you have any favorite characters in episode one that you enjoyed more than others? I think I think they should have ponied up for Liam Neeson a bit more. <laughs> If you say Jar Jar Binks, so help me. <laughs> no, but I, I want to get into a conversation about that late, a bit later, if that's all right with you. Yeah, no, absolutely, for sure. So uh, you, you, Liam Neeson's character, I can't pronounce his name. You'll notice that in my reviews as well. Qui-Gon Jinn is his name. Like I said, I'm not a super fan. I love these movies, but it is what it is. But Qui-Gon, I loved him because he was kind of the level-headed mentor. Before there was Yoda. Right. And that that's who he was, was a mentor. Liam Neeson, awesome guy. Love him to bits. He's a really good actor. The notes I have for Qui-Gon, I, the only thing I wrote down was that his description of the... So when they pull into the town in the desert, he says, it's almost the same, if not verbatim, as Obi-Wan's description of Mos Eisley. It's a... It's a wretched, wretched hive of scum and villainy, right? Yeah, so, and yeah, that, he, that's kind of the that's kind of, like the nuances get you when you're rewatching these films, right? And, and like for for me, my favorite character, Episode One, I Obi Wan Kenobi, like he he stole the show. I mean, Ewan McGregor was freaking awesome. I tell you, that funny. guy doesn't get enough credit for all he's done for the Star Wars legacy. And it's funny because we were talking about you were talking about Mace Windu and Ewan McGregor. There were um, in the notes in the in the trivia that I found that um, Joseph Fiennes auditioned for the role of Obi Wan Kenobi. So that would have been like a completely different sort of situ- situation for sure. I, I, I like Fine, but I think they made the right call. Yeah, well, absolutely. I think McGregor knocked it out of the park, and he he practiced. He watched the old movies. He watched the old Obi Wan. His name is escaping me right now, but he watched him in like Shakespeare plays and sort of copied his mannerisms and his and the way he spoke. And I think he nailed it. And I mean, he shows that even in the in the new ones where he's older. Yeah, he's just amazing. And like, and, and for all you and for all you guys who like to geek out with us. You can find all this content on Disney Plus. I'm not sponsored. That's just I'm a Disney kid for life. Uh, DJ Talk knows this, uh, so there's my Disney Plus plug for the day. Nice. Another thing I just wanted to mention about Ewan that was funny is when he was filming, he would literally be making the lightsaber noises with his mouth. <laughs> so he's yeah. like, and the director was like, "Dude, you don't have to do that. We'll put that in afterwards. Like, leave it alone." He's but like, it's so much fun. If I had a lightsaber, <laughs> if I had a lightsaber, I'd do that too. And I'm on the floor and pretend to be Superman. <laughs> right. Totally. And I mean, that's that's the cool thing about Star Wars is that the the there's fans, right? And like even the people who are in the movies were fans. Like yeah. Like I read somewhere. I I don't know if this is true or not, but I read somewhere that. Uh, Liam Neeson agreed to do the film without even reading the script. Yes, so I've I've also read that. Yeah, and I mean, like, why why wouldn't you, right? Like, hey, look, if they want me to be a Jedi, I'll be a Jedi, <laughs> right? Like, sign me up, dude. Yeah, like to be in a Star Wars movie would be just like holy moly, that would be crazy for sure. And this is why I put this as a Star Wars discussion video because I knew I 
I knew we were going to jump around because that's how we are in real life and that's how we're going to be on camera. So I don't know how interesting this is for anybody else because just you and I just talking about it. But Well, I got 23 subscribers at the moment, so it's not – we're talking to thin air. So Well, hit that like button, boys. Come on, let's go. <laughs> well, I got the scroll on the bottom. But yeah, this is this is great. I, I really, really love the fact that you're here. And for those of you who don't know, just on a quick pause here, and DJ will attest to this, my goal is to get as many of my friends on my YouTube channel as possible to have discussions like this about everything. And it would be fun to get a bunch of people in and, and start arguing and fighting about it because people have different opinions. And I think that my opinion is different than than yours or somebody else's right like there's there's so many different angles you can come at a movie or a series that ranking movie. video is going to get me cancelled you should have been cancelled a long time ago Dave. oh it'll happen <laughs> trust me. it'll happen trust me yeah so you said you said the magic words earlier jar jar banks mm -hmm. i have zero notes on jar jar banks i i don't no so. but i have a question okay and it's not it's not about Jar Jar. My my contention is this: which one is more annoying throughout the course of the franchise? Is it Jar Jar or is it C three PO? Because I tell you, there's times when I'm watching these films, and I love them to death, but I can't stand C three PO sometimes. But you see, for me, C three PO is like the voice of a reason. He's like, don't go that way. What do you want to go that way for? It's dangerous over there, right? Like he actually, I I just caught this while you're talking about that. I remember a line when C3PO was like, "Maybe surrendering to the Empire isn't the worst idea. Maybe they'll be kind to us." Right? And he's like, he's like, I don't, I don't want to do that. That's that's that uh, that's bad. <laughs> he's like, and I mean, if you don't have that character, you don't ha you don't get that relationship, right? Like. R2-D2 is like, he goes into to, uh, situations with his guns blazing. He's like, oh, there's stuff going on over there? I'm going to go see what it is, right? <laughs> and and C-3PO is like, hold on a second. Like, let's think about this for a minute. Like, take your time, right? He's the voice of reason, right? And I think that, like, for me, that's, like, growing up, I was like that. I was like, I don't know about this, you guys. Like, that seems like a bad idea. Probably going to get us into trouble. That and, was me too, but and, I just I and and maybe that maybe that's why people don't bring up C three PO's annoyance as much because he serves a purpose in the film. Yeah, I don't see C three PO as annoying as I do Jar Jar, and I mean Jar 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 Jar's sort of uh, role in the in the series is to be sort of a comedic relief, right? Like he's he's supposed to be stupid and bumbly and like do dumb stuff because i mean that's a way to make the story move through and get to where they need them to be right so yeah oh, the police are coming to get you, you you're canceled already see it's yeah <laughs> i i believe that's the ambulance <laughs> don't worry we got we got noise uh cancellation in post so we're good okay so that, that didn't happen we'll have to edit that out <laughs> oh don't worry my magic editor will do that so nice 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 yeah, with, so I mean, like... And, and so, you know, we'll have jump cuts and everything. So, you know, if, if you see DJ's face going like this, you know, you know what? That's funny. But uh, this is great. What other notes do you have? I'm curious. Um, I really sort of just got through episode one, and I just did some, like, high-level trivia sort of about it. Um, so All right, shoot. Let, let, er, I, I did the review, so... Right. So episode one is the fourth film, as we've yeah. already said. Um, it's the first first chrono chronological chapter of Star Wars. Yeah. It was the highest grossing film of 1999, the second highest grossing film worldwide in North America behind Titanic, which is just being re-released. Not right? surprised. It and was Titanic's going to move up the leaderboard again, but right? that's another story for another time. It was the first Star Wars movie to not win an Oscar. Not win an Oscar. Yeah, it was nominated but never won anything. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have ever guessed that. What else? It marked uh, George Lucas's first directorial effort after a 22-year hi hiatus, 
following the first Star Wars. So he directed Star Wars um, Episode Four, right? Is that uh, true? Does Howard the Duck not belong to Lucasfilm? I believe Howard the Duck was Steven Spielberg. I could be wrong. How could it be so bad if it was a Spielberg? <laughs> what do you mean bad? <laughs> no, I love Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck is my favorite movie, Marvel movie of them all, to be honest with you. But it, it it's iconically bad, and maybe that's why I love it, because it's in the it's so bad I love it territory. But yeah, you you got some nice trivia there because I've learned some things already. And what and, else? Now you got me looking up Howard the Duck. Is Howard the Duck on Disney? No. No. It should be though. It's a Marvel property. Now I want to watch that movie. <laughs> it's been so long. I love that stuff, man. Yes, we um, geek out over here on this channel, me and my friends. Yeah, let's get back on track here. Uh, what else? Well, they expect this from us, I'm sure. Uh, and this is bonus content, so they don't even know this is coming. The big thing that happened with episode one, the teaser trailer was released accompanying a movie called Meet Joe Black. That seems Brad like a Jack Black movie? It was, it was Brad Pitt. It was released in 1998, and people were actually paying full price to go to the movie. They'd watch the Star Wars trailer and leave. No other movie could pull that off. <laughs> right? The other movies that played the trailer were Waterboy, the Siege and a Bug's Life. So wow, see these are see. I don't take notes. For those of you who who don't know, I'm an off the cuff kind of guy, and my buddy DJ here is is not, and that's why we mess so well. He keeps me on track. Yeah, and what else do I have? It was released in 1999. Yeah, um, yeah, that was that's really all I have for notes on the first one. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, Darth Maul. Darth he doesn't. Maul. He doesn't show up about a half an hour into the movie, and he speaks a total of three lines through the whole show. And then he goes bye bye. <laughs> and he gets chopped in half. Spoiler: Is he dead? Is he not dead? Uh, is anybody perma dead in not, anything? Not in, not in Star Wars. <laughs> Here's a trivia question. Here's a trivia question for you guys in the comments if you're still watching this. And 30 minutes in, if you are, thank you very much. How many times has Emperor Palpatine returned to the franchise? That's my point exactly. Right. And the worst thing about that is, while I'm talking about this, is they shoehorn him in so many times. Like, we yeah. need a big bad. We don't have Vader. We need a big bad. We're going to go back and get Palpatine. That's what happens in these movies. That's funny. You are, if you're still here again... This is a Star Wars discussion. If we did this live, it'd probably throw us off YouTube. Yeah, but. we would. It would be just like turn those kids off. What are they? Doing? <laughs> so, what what is your favorite trilogy of the three? The original. Yeah. Like the the original, like, and I'm talking like the original original. I don't yeah. like. I I mean, I like the the redone, but I don't like the extra digital content that they threw in there. It just seems like they were like, let's throw something like. Oh, let's put this guy here, and then like they put the Jabba the Hut scene with uh, Han Solo and Jabba the Hut when when they first meet on Star on uh, Moss Eisley there, and it's like that. No, <laughs> like what? No, yeah. don't don't do that. Uh, and to be honest, I think and uh, don't crucify me in the comments again. I think they could have stopped at Episode Six. I really yeah, think and people people do. I've heard people say that like. But um, for me, the new the new episodes that they released again, it has the way I look at it is it brings Star Wars to a new generation, and it gives the kids and that's always a key thing something to be hype about. And I'm like I'm totally all about that because I love I love it when I go somewhere and I see kids like with Star Wars stuff and they have the toys and they have new stuff and they have new they have new thoughts and new ideas, right? And that's where that's what's cool about even like the TV stuff, like the Mando and the Boba Fett. And it, and... Yeah, and it bring it gets you get to bring new ideas and tell new stories, and that's always been a thing with sci-fi, right? Is that there's always a story to be told, even outside of the movies, right? Like there's books, and I've read like I've read one Star Wars book in my entire life. And like it's one of my favorite books, and I'll read it all the time. But yeah, like I just love that you can share that and and connect with it 
in your own way. And like for a guy like you, who's not like super nerdy about it, you're like, Man, I can watch the movies and be entertained by them. That's, that's fun. Right. And I think that's, that's what's cool about Star Wars. There's literally a Star Wars for everybody. Yeah. And like you said, depending on your level of fandom, it, it takes a different turn. Yeah. It does. The, the one thing, the one thing with me for the later episodes and I'm still going to review them because it doesn't make sense to do six and then do a ranking video with three videos missing. But uh, they seem disjointed a little bit. Well, and I mean, that's just because of like time differences, like like real like real world time difference. Right. Like you really have to. Uh, what's the word? You, you have to sort of have that in perspective. Right. Because I mean, like and like I just said, different people have different perspectives, different ideas. And they're going to bring that to the table when they make a movie, right? Like, yeah. And, and now here, here's my most important question of the day. Do you think that because we had to wait so long between trilogy that now we are oversaturating the Star Wars market a little bit? If you think about it, we got the third trilogy. We got Andor. We got Obi-Wan. We got Boba Fett. And we got more coming. So... If I stick to what I originally just said, then no, because I think there's lots of stories that can be told. And if you tell them in a, if you take the time to tell them in a good way, then there's no oversaturation. But I mean, like, if you release them like you did Marvel movies, like the Avengers, where it's like you have like 15,000 Avenger movies, like, I'm going to get overwhelmed and just be like, no, I'm good. <laughs> right? The the pacing of the Star Wars movies has been very well. Yeah, and I I, I like that, and I think I appreciate that. I don't think we need 6,000 Marvel episodes a year. No, but. and I mean, I could I could piss people off and say I don't think you need any. <laughs> well, after the... <laughs> yeah, we're just working on getting me uh, dropping subscribers here. Yeah. Uh, after the Infinity Saga... That would have been a perfect place to end the MC. You told the story you wanted to tell. Be done with it. <laughs> Be done. Right. But I think I, I think that's, and I'm tying this all back to Star Star Wars. I promise. And I think that's the problem with the last trilogy is it wasn't George Lucas's vision. And how much a how much of a different episode seven, eight, and nine would we have gotten if it was still under Lucas's control? And I think it would have been different but i don't think it would have been as good taking a shot at the original jedi master look at you <laughs> i mean no no disrespect but to the man who made the property we're talking about today yeah, right. i'm sure i'm sure he'll take his four four billion dollars and wipe his tears with his right. four billion dollars. so i'm pretty sure george <laughs> Lee, if you're watching subscribe to the channel will you <laughs> right Shoot me a check. I'm okay. Yeah, <laughs> AdSense isn't enough, but we don't get AdSense because we only got 23 subscribers. And uh, just so you know, this won't be the last time that you see DJ with me. It might be the last time for a while because we've been kind of planning this for a couple of years. But uh, he can come back anytime he wants. Is there anything else we need to discuss? No, I mean, if you have other questions for me, I, I mean, sure. Okay, Here, here's another question. When, when... The twins get separated, being Luke and Leia. What, 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 what do you think was the overarching story there? Because at the time when the now I'm basing this on the first trilogy, the iconic trilogy. Okay. We're not given the information as to why this happened. Right. So we kind of go into that without knowing the purpose behind it. Right. Now that could solve twenty three years later. Yeah, but what um, was the purpose behind not having the brother and sister grow up together? Do you think the only thing I would say, if you sort of like put blinders on and didn't know what was happening in like one, two, and three, or four, five, or what seven, eight, nine, however that math goes. Um, yeah, we're not we're not <laughs> math guys. Is that the, the Jedis that were like Yoda and what's his name? Yeah. Anyways, like the, the powers that be basically saw that if Vader caught wind that he had children, 
he would either have them destroyed or have them where he take possession and he would be like these kids are mine and now they're part of the the dark side and then they're gonna like fsu right like they're just gonna and, and you know what i noticed too now that I, i'm really looking into this star wars series it amazes me yoda became as popular as he did because he's not as big a part of this franchise as people make him out to be no like when you go back and watch these movies he's not in them a ton no and i mean he was in like in the first the first three He's probably not even in it for like an hour, and like in 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 Empire, the movie that you just reviewed, he is such a little turd. That'll be up tomorrow, by the way, if you're watching this, because I'm going to edit this today and put it up tonight. So. Like when he shows up, when Luke shows up on hot on uh, Dagobah, and is like, "Oh, I'm looking for a Jedi Master," and Yoda's like, "Oh, oh, oh like." Who, that kid? was one of my favorite parts <laughs> of the film. He's he's just messing with him the whole right. time, and he's like trying to steal his food, and he's like, and R two D two is like having none of it. He's like, no, who's this little green guy messing with my master's things? And, and he's like, like, he's got his little stick, and he's banging him over the head. With it. And maybe that's maybe that's it. Maybe he just maximized his minutes in 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 these movies. And like to uh, to credit. Jim Henson and Frank Oz. Frank Oz is awesome. And I mean, like, Frank Oz is, like, the guy who is, like, who is he Fozzie Bear and, like, Miss Piggy. And, like, I just love the Muppet sort of mentality of Yoda, yeah. right? And I think that's that's where that comes from, right? Like, he's such a little shithead. <laughs> he's, like, he's so, he's so Muppety, right? Like, he's such a... He's a cantankerous old man who's been on this planet by himself for so long. He finally gets to see li life, and it's Luke Skywalker, and he's like, "Oh, this kid, like, let's let's mess around with him for a minute, right?" Like, and like, if you know anything about Star Wars and like the original trilogy, there's a real sort of Japanese samurai sort of sense to the Jedi and the way they sort of conduct themselves. Yeah. And Yoda's part of that, right? Like, he's a grandmaster. He's, like, he's all-knowing. He's, like, he's a super, he's amazing, right? And, I mean, he could, like, take it. He's, like, two feet tall, but he could take you down with the, like, just looking at you. DJ's going to hate this, but I'm going to do it anyway. To keep up with this channel, subscribe, you must. And that's where the retention drops off on the yeah. video. The bad, the bad impression gets you sewered, right? That's who are some of your favorite characters in the Star Wars universe? So Yoda is one. Obi Wan is <clears throat> Obi Wan. Old and new is two. I love a stormtrooper, even though they're stupid and they they got bad uh, aim and they're ridiculous. They can't kill a thing, but they bonk their heads. Have you ever have you seen that? Yes, they okay. got bad aim. They no, have, have you bonk their heads. Have you seen him bonk his head? You've seen yeah. that. That happens. It's a thing. That's a um, true. Yeah. Who, who else? Han Solo, Boba Fett. Yeah, that Boba Fett series. I pertain uh, ruined Boba Fett, but we could we could have a whole other discussion on that. We should definitely do that one day. We'll, we'll, we'll have a number. We'll have we'll have a second Star Wars discussion, and I promise you, folks, it'll be as organized as this one was. <laughs> Little behind the scenes for you guys. I was like, I'm going to do the Star Wars episodes reviewed, and then I'm going to do a ranking. And then he's like, and then DJ was like, I got stuff to say. Yeah, I was like, comes in and says, I got things to say about that. And I had notes for episode one, so kudos on you for breaking that out and putting me on the spot and going with all, all friggin' nine of them. I mean, that's cool, right? Like, that's... Yeah. That's and like I, I said, we have we have other plans, me and DJ, but we're busy. But we do have other plans for you guys. Maybe and there'll be other things to talk about, I'm sure, for sure. And uh, maybe not necessarily on this channel. Wink, wink. Huh. But we won't get into that right now because me and DJ are horrible at planning things. But uh, so you were mentioning that Yoda was on screen for less than an hour. So what captivates everybody with Yoda? Well, is obviously his little personality and like i said his muppet sort of sensibilities i think is i think that's probably what does it for him and it's baby yoda i know they've named him but he's still baby yoda 
he's all, once a baby Yoda, always a baby Yoda. And I love and baby Yoda too, right? Like, and I think learning more about his story will be will be a little more exciting too, right? Like, yeah, this is this is interesting. I'm, I mean, look, we could let's let's put a pin in this, and 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 let's let's do another video about the the offshoots. Let, let's do it. There you go, folks. I don't know when that's coming. Because we just label these bonus content for the movie channel. He's DJ, but I'm going to try and be professional for about three, 30 seconds here. Uh, DJ, do you have a Twitter, YouTube, um, You can whatever? hit me up on SoundCloud at, at DJ Talk. It's at DJ T-O-C. Yeah. His name's on the screen, at DJ T-O-C. You can follow me on Twitter at uh, Mo Money 1983 It's always Mo Money at the movies if you can find it. Uh, DJ, you're welcome back anytime, and it and it, you just revealed we'll do a second one of these for the offshoots of the TV shows and everything like that. So there's more Star Wars content coming, and for this video and the rest of the reviews on the channel, I put it in a playlist for you, so it's easy to find. DJ, thanks for being here. Any final words for the viewers? No, it's been my pleasure, dude. I love talking about Star Wars and getting nerdy with it. Let's. Let's do it again. You bet. It's not white and nerdy like Weird Al, but <laughs> hey, I'm Mo Money. He's DJ Talk, and you've been at the movies. That was solid, man. Yeah, you like that? That was fun. Yeah, I was like, okay, if he's got 20 minutes worth of notes, I got to let him talk. And then he had like five minutes worth of notes, and I'm like, I'm glad I carried that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> right? Totally. Good like, that that would have been a short I video. It. I dig it. That was fun. Let's do it again. You bet, brother. So what else you got going on today? Oh, uh, this is it. Oh, we're still on. We're still live. Oh, my gosh.